Fox Nation presents podcasts. Wow. I mean, a, a wonderful approach to those big things in life where she just, it, it's almost as if she took a deep breath and went, okay, God wants me to carry his son. How will this work? Let's begin. Women of the Bible speak. Now here's your host, Shannon Breen. Welcome to Women of the Bible Speak podcast. I'm your host and author of the book, Shannon Bream. Whether you grew up going to Sunday school and reading the Bible or you haven't read it in years, there are so many inspiring and timeless stories in the Bible, and many people don't realize what a big role women played in these stories. These women I write about are dealing with things that are still relevant to the women of 2021. They are all amazing lessons that fit today that we can all find inspiration and hope from. I am really excited and privileged to have a good friend with me today to talk about some of her favorite women in the Bible, Megan Alexander. She is all kinds of things, a wife, a mom of three adorable kiddos, an author of Faith in the Spotlight, in our children's book, which you will love, love, love. One more hug. She's a country music journalist, and you may recognize her as my mom does, her biggest fan. She's a correspondent on Inside Edition as well. Megan, thanks for being with us. Thank you so much for having me, Shannon. Well, listen, you and I have talked about one of the primary women in this book around Christmas time. We talked about Mary, the mother of Jesus, certainly one of the best known women in the Bible uh, and around the world, whether you're a person of faith or not. Um, So many people know that she was just a young woman. Uh, The Bible tells us when the the angel Gabriel came to her and told her some pretty amazing stuff uh, that she was going to be with child. This was going to be a divine intervention and she was going to give birth to the Messiah. She asks in Luke 1 34, how will this be since I'm a virgin? And, but I write in the book, the first thing I thought is like, oh no, how am I going to explain this to everyone? She was betrothed to Joseph, but he knew they hadn't physically been together, but to her family and her community. I mean, hiding a pregnancy in those days couldn't have been too easy once you start to show. Um, but she was such grace, took on this assignment and said, I will be known as blessed among women. She was very humble. And she took on the assignment that may have been very scary for a lot of people. Shannon, Mary is hugely inspirational in so many ways. And when I found out we were writing this book, you know, you and I, we we corresponded quite a bit. And I just thought I would love to talk about Mary, the mother of Jesus, because for me personally, especially around the holidays, I long to know more about her. I yearn to understand more, you know, exactly what she went through when she was pregnant with Jesus and, you know, being pregnant myself, what was it like? Did, did Jesus kick the way that all of our babies <laughs> kick in our belly when it was the son of God, the savior, but yet yeah, you just threw out a couple of things like right from the get go. Mary is just incredible. I mean, culturally speaking, she was what, maybe 14, 15. We think she was a teenager, young, Mm -hmm. young woman. And in her culture, to to be a young woman who is engaged, which is basically married. I mean, you did not break off engagements in those days, right? And um, and then to suddenly have the weight of this on her. A couple of things that struck me, Shannon, from your book, which I loved working my way through. First and foremost, you talk about that she immediately received this message from the angel and 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 started processing it and asking questions of, oh, okay, well, let's break it down. How can this be since I'm a virgin? She didn't say no and run away with this right. massive assignment. She started processing it and breaking it down. And I was thinking she immediately received it, but yet in a very thoughtful way started saying, okay. How is this going to work out? (laughs) Wow. I mean, a a wonderful approach to those big things in life where she just, it's almost as if she took a deep breath and went, okay, God wants me to carry his son. How will this work? Let's begin talking Mm -hmm. about it. I I just love her approach there. And yet very real in how she, you know, started asking questions about how will this be? You know, why me? Um, But then you also talked about Shannon, how she immediately, you know, clung to prayer. She, Mm -hmm. she went to the Lord. She's dialoguing with the angel. She continues to, you know, seek the Lord in all areas of her life. I mean, simple and yet so important how she processed things. Mm -hmm. Right. And like you said, she didn't go running from it. It must've been overwhelming. Just think if an angel showed up at your house right now in your room, like, I, I don't know that I could speak. 
And the fact that oh, she's yeah. this young woman who's now asking very important questions and she's willing, she's called on for a huge assignment. And I know that all of us in our lives, um, people of faith have had times where we felt God calling us to do something or asking us to do something. I had one of these moments today that involved a barista at Starbucks. And I was like, Listen, I hesitated on something a couple of weeks ago that I felt like God was asking me to do. And I regretted it later that I didn't reach out to this person. So I was like, all right, this is it today with this barista, um, try to bless this person. And, um, you know, that's something so tiny compared to what Mary was asked to do, but we're all we're asked at some time to do something that calls on us to take a step of faith, big or small. And we all in our lives have some huge ones, whether it's about, marriage or children or career or health or finance. Um, and Mary's a good example for us in walking in faith. Absolutely. And when those moments come, like, I wonder how did she get to that point of being able to receive that news, um, in such a thoughtful way, obviously sharing that she was overwhelmed and not certain, but had she been raised to process things that way? Was she constantly in dialogue with the Lord? And it really feels like that conversation with the angel, like you said, she wasn't completely shocked, even though she, she might've been overwhelmed, but it was like, okay, God, this is what you want me to do. This is my life. This is what I've been called to do. Um, and that continues through her whole life in the way she dialogues with Jesus at the wedding when mm -hmm. she comes to him. You also wrote, Shannon, about her deep relationships, and they immediately showed up when you talk about that the first person she shared the news with was her cousin. Yeah. She I love that story. Me too. Like <laughs> she doesn't go to the street corner and shout it out. She didn't run away. Mm -hmm. She went to her family. It's like, I, I found myself going, okay, gosh, who are my close friends and my close family that I would go to with such big news? Mm -hmm. I mean, life-changing news. She goes to her family and it, they immediately have something in common mm -hmm. because lo and behold, Elizabeth is also carrying a very special baby. But how, how thoughtful that was that she already had people in her life that she could talk to. Mm -hmm. And again, how important it is for all of us to have those close friends and family that, that we can process stuff with. Yeah. Her cousin, Elizabeth, who we understand to be older and maybe the baby was a surprise to her because there's a whole backstory on how she becomes pregnant with John the Baptist, who was a forerunner for Jesus. They were close in ministry and throughout their lives together and clearly related because Elizabeth and Mary were cousins. So I find that so much of what I read or know about Mary is that early visit from Gabriel, the initial reaction she had to the news and processing it. But I thought it was important in the book as well to include that uh, other steps in her life uh, where she was in the temple, where Simeon and Anna were there to be bear witness to Jesus as the Messiah. And also when they go on a trip to Jerusalem, they're going home. And guess what? Jesus isn't with them. They don't even figure it out for a couple of days. They go back and find him as this young, young guy teaching in the temple. The people are listening to his every word. And when she says, like any mom who's missing their kid would say, what have you been doing? What are you doing? We were so worried about you. He says, don't you know, I have to be about my father's business. Yeah. So we see along the way, she's a mom of yes, the Messiah, but of a boy of a young man growing up who had very real mom interactions with him. Mm -hmm. Yeah, absolutely. That's a fascinating one too, because you start to see what the relationship is in terms of she is well aware that he's the son of God, but when would that start to play out? Mm -hmm. You know, Shannon, did you work through that? Like as he was growing up, were there moments along the way where maybe she saw it, but that was, you know, 12, 13, he's at the temple mm -hmm. where it truly became, okay, this, my son is now stepping into his destiny and into his calling 100%, um, even though of course he always was, but yet, you know, you said that she, we, we wonder if she pondered that it would be a little bit later, you know, he mm -hmm. would be a little bit older, started so young and yet what that relationship must've been like. I mean, she always seems to be thoughtful in her approach, observing, right. She ponders things in her heart. Mm -hmm. Um, and, and yet very peaceful. It feels like yes. with God's will. And, and that's maybe one of the many reasons God chose her. That is a question I was thinking of as, as I was reading this chapter, Shannon is again, that question of why her, 
Mm-hmm. And, and, and we long for maybe sometimes a big statement from the Lord as to why we get these little hints along the way. But then I realized as I'm working my way through your chapter, maybe God continually reveals it all through the gospels. He sprinkles it here and there in these exchanges and these moments and how she interacted with Jesus at the temple. And then later at the wedding, he's revealing the whole time why he chose. For the full podcast, go to foxnewspodcast.com.